Many growers of high value crops in the northeastern United States are adopting protected culture practices to better grow and manage their crop. High and low plastic tunnels can both be used to extend the growing season and improve fruit quality. There is also some evidence that plastics prevent infestation of several important pests and pathogens. There are dozens of options for selecting a plastic for high and low tunnels, each with different features and capabilities that impact plant quality. In this video, we will discuss one important feature of plastics used in protected culture, UV selectivity, and how this type of photoselectivity affects plant and pest management practices. Plastics range in how they transmit and diffuse light. Natural light that affects plant growth is composed of visible light, ultraviolet radiation, or wavelengths of light that gives you sunburns, and infrared light, the kind of light you can't see but feel as heat. Plastics can be purchased to block, partially transmit, or fully transmit these different types of light. The effect of UV selective films on plant yield is largely variable although there is considerable evidence that such films affect plant characteristics and pest pressure. The type of UV and degree to which it is transmitted are important characteristics of a film in terms of plant health and pest management. Exposure to natural UV affects plant chemistry and morphology. The presence of UVB can trigger the production of anthocyanins, flavonoids, and phenols in some plants. And for strawberry, this can increase berry color and decrease firmness. Exposure to UVB can also reduce the concentration of chlorophyll and carotenoids in leaves. The morphology of plants can also be influenced by exposure to UV, and this includes increased leaf thickness and formation of trichomes. These chemical and morphological responses to UV appear to have minimal impact on overall plant growth and yield, but could indirectly impact the health of herbivores and plant pathogens. It is not uncommon for plants grown under ambient UVB to show increased resistance to herbivores compared to plants grown without such exposure. This effect is likely due to the enhanced presence of secondary metabolites used for plant defense when exposed to UV. In this case, UVB blocking plastics may increase pest pressure. Blocking UVA radiation, on the other hand, may reduce pest pressure. Many insects rely on UVA to navigate their environment by perceiving patterns exposed under UV light that are invisible to the human eye. Disrupting these patterns by blocking UVA can disorient insects and reduce host finding. In fact, a recent study at Penn State found that UVA blocking plastics reduced Japanese beetle presence and feeding damage on high tunnel raspberry. It is important to note that beneficial predators, parasitoid wasps, and pollinators use similar navigation systems to pest species. One example is the use of nectar guides by pollinators. Thus, blocking UVA can potentially disrupt the activity of beneficial as well as pest species. Many pathogens are sensitive to UV. In general, UVA can stimulate spore germination of some pathogens, including botrytis, while exposure to UVB can harm spores of many species. This not only applies to plant pathogens, but also to insect pathogens used for biological control. For plant pathogens, lower rates of infection have been observed under plastics of all UV limiting types. Thus, keeping plants dry appears to be more important for managing diseases than manipulating the UV environment. UV degradation of pesticides can severely reduce longevity and efficacy. Researchers at Michigan State found that reduced UV transmission increased longevity of several insecticides applied on high tunnel raspberries. However, this was not consistent for all active ingredients tested in this study. Thus, if pest outbreaks do occur, applying selective pesticides under plastics may increase control efficacy.
Plastics used for protected culture systems come with varying photoselective properties that differentially impact plant, animal, and microbe communities. In general, plants appear to be better defended against herbivores when UVB is present, but can also be susceptible to herbivory when UVA is present. In addition, beneficial insects may also rely on UVA to navigate their environment. But whether UVA transmitting plastics are beneficial to pollinators in the tunnel environment is so far unclear. If pesticides are being applied for pest control, and especially pathogens for biocontrol, a film blocking UVB may be more beneficial than a plastic transmitting UVB. Thus, the anti-herbivore effects of plastics grown under UVB transmitting plastics might be offset by reduced efficacy of pesticides and insect pathogens. Further research is needed to explain plastic effects on pest communities and how possible trade-offs factor into overall success of the system. However, even with such trade-offs, growing crops under plastic tunnels or greenhouses of any plastic type can be a very effective tool for improving plant quality and reducing maintenance costs, especially for organic growers and those adopting IPM practices. Thank you for watching. 